David Clark, who's from the group Positive Money, which campaigns for what it calls a fair banking system is set up after the crash. Um, <laughs> good luck with that, but let's talk about ATMs in the meantime. The evidence is that people are not using as much cash, cash as they were, but how many people still rely on it? We're constantly fed this argument that cash is obsolete, we're all stopping using cash. And that's, that's an argument I'll admit I kind of believed myself until I looked into the reality, which is there's actually more demand for cash than ever before. The majority of us, we, the majority of people we polled, three quarters said that access to a free ATM was essential to their daily day life. This but is happening because of cost cutting by banks and card companies. That presumably rather depends on where you live. And one can understand that argument in rural areas. But, I, but anecdotally, I don't know when I, people don't pay cash in bars or cafes or wherever, anywhere around here. I, like most people, uh, choose to use a variety of different payment methods. I use card, uh, cards, mobile apps, but I depend on cash on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's like the majority of people in this country. Cash machines are disappearing, not because of changing consumer behaviour, but because banks have lobbied for a cut in the amount that they pay to maintain the ATM, ATM network, and the government isn't doing enough to stop the, the alarming trend of cash machine closures. What, what happens now is you tend to find a machine that charges you per transaction. Are, are, is, is free cash a thing of the past? We're, we are seeing um, more and more machines moving from uh, free to use to pay to use. That, 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 that's a trend we can expect to continue because the companies that operate the cash machines are receiving less from the banks um, every time you make a transaction. Uh, some might say you're being a bit cynical, saying this is purely a move on behalf of the banks. Uh, their evidence is that fewer people need cash. And as I say, what may be true here in the centre of London is very different if you're down in Cornwall or uh, the, the east of England, where rural areas rather depend on these machines. Yeah, well, we've got to ask, uh, where is the cost greater for people using for um, people using cash machines? Is it on the banks or is the cost greater for the, the elderly person who the cash machine disappears and they have to spend their money on a bus fare to the nearest town or they're, they're holding more money in their house and that there's a safety issue there as well. Well, is that, explain that because who are the people hardest hit by this? You know, the majority of us are using cash on a regular basis. There are, there is about two million people who rely almost exclusively on cash. They're likely to be older people, people on low incomes, and those, so there's, they we're really concerned about the effect on these vulnerable groups um, if cash disappears completely. And what we're seeing is these machines which are supposed to be protected by the regulator in isolated and rural areas, those are closing, leaving whole communities without access to their money. Is it inevitable that cash will be a thing of the past? Cash is not going down without a fight. <coughs> we, we really support uh, Quitch's campaign for a regulator with a specific duty to protect cash access. We're working with consumer <coughs> groups like which, business groups, other campaigners. We're going to fight to protect cash. Banks, you know, they, we've seen a massive closure of bank branches over the last few years, in spite of the fact that banks are still re re receiving billions in subsidies from the taxpayer. We deserve, you know, <coughs> banks to give us these access to these vital financial services. David Clark, thank you very much. I'm putting up with my coughing, interrupting you, but thank you very much. Good to Thanks. talk to you.